Andy, do you ever have those thoughts where you were like sitting in your car? Yes. Okay, good. When I was having the other day, I know you think, which I appreciate about you. I do think. Are there times when you pause and you're pensive and you consider larger <laughs> questions about life? The there answer is, is yes, is. I am that kind of person. I like that. And so are you. So I tell am. me what this deep, pensive thought was or is. The other day about our business, I was like, why is it the way it is? Now, are you talking about Elite Advisor Network? Are you? No, this is like Am I being fired? This right is, now? yeah, that's <laughs> on air. <laughs> that's right. Make sure to control yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do it in a public so place biz- or on a podcast. In, business as I think in about our industry. The industry. Okay. And part of what Elite Advisor Network is, is us challenging the yes. status quo. It's, it's, the, I get asked once a week, literally, once a week, someone will say, So why does Sten do this? Like, right. and I'm like, you mean Elite Advisor Network? I'm like, that's actually a really good question. Because yeah. they're like, what's the motivation? Because he says his company. Yeah. And I think it leads into what you're talking about. For years, as a young advisor, you know, the pursuit was, I got to figure this system out. I have to make money. I have to find clients. I have to build a firm. And for me, at some point, you figure out, like, I figured it out. But, like, I love helping clients and we have other advisors and, like, that mission is still in me. But something else was awoken in me that said, I was accepting the average path, kind of what the industry told me was the way to do it for right. so long and became so frustrated and wasn't achieving what I wanted to until I kind of broke out of that. And so, yeah, part of what we do is is that we want to tell advisors, hey, there's a better way. You don't have to do the average path. You don't have to do what the industry says you, you know, will do in 10 years or 20 years. We think you can do it faster. Right. And through that, and we do this every day and we come up with content and we coach hundreds of advisors, is that the other day I thought for the first time in a while, like, why is it even the way it is? Like, at what point did someone say that you take your time, which most people would no one argue this is your most valuable asset these days. There's a lot of yeah. people talking about that. I'm willing to give that away for free over and over again for the chance that someone buys something for me. And if I do enough of that and people buy enough things, then I will have a successful career. Mm -hmm. That is the status quo. And so as I sat there and just thought about it, I was like going back in time, at what point was that, you know, were there 10 people sitting around a table that like came up with this? Yeah. Because the system has endured because somebody is doing okay. There, There are people at some level of this that are happy with it and making money and don't really care enough for it to change yeah what i know to be true though is at the advisor level that if 90 percent of people that try this business fail it's broken at that level right and that's really where we spend a lot of our time is advisor level saying there's a better way to do it i think about this in relation to like there are school systems like there's one state i won't get into specifics because i'm gonna be too tangential on it but like there's a state where instead of having like a school district for each like county or whatever they have like 10 school districts in each county. And what ends up happening is they have this massive overload of administrative expenses. There's no efficiency, yeah. And so, yeah, all the efficiencies are gone. And it's like, why is it that way? It's like, well, that's just the way they do it. And you're like, I know, but if you cross the state line, it's completely different. It costs this much less. Like, why is it in Illinois, you know, property taxes are 10 times, 20 times as much as they are in Tennessee? Mm -hmm. Like, because some, and there's an explanation for that. But my point is, yes, because someone, created that and then tolerated it yes right right? and so if you're listening to this watching us on youtube you're a part of something a a, an industry that has said this is how a vast vast majority of you must operate Mm -hmm. and it takes a lot to step back from that and say really like do i do i or have i just accepted that to be true and there have been people i know as i came up through the, the industry that spoke into it, that, that at times stopped and said, hey, here's a different way to do it. My experience for a lot of years is a lot of those people were saying, hey, here's a way, do this thing harder and longer, yeah, and eventually it'll be successful. Like that, that so many people, even the influencers or people trying to challenge the average path of the industry were essentially creating just like a harder path that would yield better results if you did more of it long enough. Is that, as an example of that, that some people would talk about, hey, here's a creative way to use this product or lean into this niche. Yeah, get creative and use it, spin it this way to get this client to come in. Or, hey, make your calls, which, hey, I'm all for calls. Uh, but some of the systems I grew up in, it was like, hey, make 100 calls. You'll reach 10 people. You'll get one meeting. Right. And the answer was do as much of that as you can. Right. And I don't know if that's because people just didn't believe in the advisor enough to just take a different path. But for yeah. me, I remember thinking, like, that sounds terrible. I could do it. <laughs> But what if I was able to call the right people with the right idea 
and with 10 calls, get five meetings and close two clients. Like right. I was willing at the time, not right away, because I dove into the system, to step back and question, like, if, if this is not working for nine out of 10 people in five years, right. I'd rather tip the odds in my favor a little bit more. I probably felt like I could have been the one out of 10. But why is that something that we're like, let's tweak this bad system a bunch of different ways as opposed to being willing to say, let's break this thing down yeah. and almost rebuild it. Some of that stuff will come back that's, you know, sales skills are enduring forever. Yeah. But for us, one thing we've taken on at the Lead Advisor Network is saying, what if an advisor could actually believe they're valuable apart from the product? Products are great. They're necessary tools. They're always going to be here. But what if in addition to that, we can teach the advisors that you actually have value and that people are willing to pay you for your ideas and time and expertise. Therefore, you don't have to sell things as fast. And you may get great clients and never buy anything or they buy something eventually, but you still get great relationships. So the foundation of today is talking about essentially rejecting the premise or the idea that what most people would agree is their greatest asset. They are just, they're bargaining with it. They're, they're using... Because I think, and, you know, if you're listening to the show, if you're watching this show, you're the kind of person, because listen, I, I know podcasts have exploded in popularity. There's no doubt, right? But there's still, I think, a very, very small amount of people that invest in their self-development. They just, you know, they go home and they watch TV and I, listen, I go home and watch TV sometimes, okay? Mm-hmm. But, but if you're listening to this, you are in a unique, small, special group of people that are like, no, I, I want to on Friday mornings get better, yeah. right, when, when we release these episodes. And so if you're one of those people, then I, I would dare say 99.9% of you would understand what I say when I say, what is your greatest asset? Mm-hmm. What is the most important asset that you have in your life? And it's time. Because the things that have the most value are the things that are the most rare. Mm-hmm. And the last minute of my life is gone, <laughs> right? And, you know, and, and we only have so much time. Yep. And so what you challenged then and your teaching and your example is to say, hey, stop bargaining with your greatest asset, which is your time, yep. and start finding a way to get paid for it. So I want to ask you... One thing I'll jump in there real quick as I have this thought, is I've interacted with advisors before that will tell me their time is valuable, and the way they allow that to change their decisions is they work less. And they use that as an excuse for not having great success. So they say, my family's important, my time's important, therefore I'm going to give up that level of success that I see these other advisors having because that's the only way to get there. And so another lie is that if I want to be a successful advisor, I have to give up all my time, work at the office long hours, work on weekends in order to have success. So because I don't want that, because I do care about my family, because time with them is my greatest asset, I'm going to essentially cut myself short forever. Mm -hmm. And what I love coaching advisors is like, you can have both. When I tell advisors I never worked on the weekends, I got home by 5.15, 5.30 every day, it's just you need to do it a different way. And so if you believe the the average path and the only way to success is doing the average path harder and longer and using all of your time up, I reject that also. But what we are saying is also if you, if you do value it so much, we need to stop giving it away transactionally in the hope of converting somebody to a product. Yeah. Let me, let me pause real quick. We're only about eight minutes into the show today. Uh, so we've got plenty more to talk about. But I, I want to just pause and mention this because our solution to this is, yes, the podcast. Our solution to this problem is certainly the podcast. Certainly it's our, our online programs and, um, you know, it's you speaking at companies and things like that. But I think that our our greatest um, impact thus far, I think, on just a one-on-one basis has been our Have a Charge Live events. And we've got another one coming up in September and I, I have this conversation weekly, almost daily with advisors. And I say, listen, if you want to radically change your business in a day and a half, yeah. then it's got to be this. And this is what we say to companies when they call and say, hey, we want to have Stan come speak. I say, it's better if you don't have him come for an hour. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But in addition to that, really, where you're going to see radical change in your company is if you have them become part of our How to Charge Live event, whether that's you know on there or here in our Nashville office. So I want to remind folks, if you go to howtochargelive.com, howtochargelive.com, uh, we are going to run a deal in, it goes until the end of June. Uh, and the How to Charge Live event, you'll see the cost there and you can get your ticket right there on that page. 
It is a Monday and Tuesday, so it's September 18th and 19th. And until the end of June, when you purchase, uh, and we'll reach out to you via email as soon as we see your purchase come through, when you get a seat, with every seat, you will get access to the How to Charge Online program, which hundreds and hundreds of advisors have gone through. Uh, and that is valued at $1,500. So that you will just get, but that's only good until the end of June, 2023. So if you're listening after that and you've got a howtochargelive.com, uh, then we may have a different promo. We have different things about hotels and whiteboards and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is literally the most generous. They get largest, the course for free? They get the course for free. That was not run by me ahead of time, but now it's out in the universe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it briefly. Uh, got to make decisions, Stan. That's All right. right. All right. So no, I appreciate you saying that because that event, we've never said, had anybody say that wasn't worth the time. And we take that content seriously and they spend a day and a half with me and you. Like, it's intense. But the things, why we are so convicted about that event and why we do it here in Nashville and also other places, pr- pr- companies privately, is they say, you know, these are 20 year plus advisors at times saying, I've never had an event like this. This is changing the way I do my business. And we now have data from advisors that said, hey, I made $0 off my time. Yep. The only thing I brought to the table was insurance products or investments. Within two, three, four, six months, six-figure revenue. Absolutely. Because now they're just having a different conversation. Yep. And they're also finding other clients that in the past were not prospects. Yeah. Because they didn't have money to invest today or they didn't need to buy insurance. But they're saying, no, I have a good income and I need help. Yeah. And so th- this is one of the biggest banners we we fly is yeah, and, and no, stop giving just, it away for free. Let me just say this. If you're going to take a shot in basketball, the best shot to take is probably a layup. Why? Percentages are pretty good. Yeah. Right. And so the reason we talk about how to charge live is it, when, it, if, if this was about the most efficient thing for us, we would just talk about online courses because mm-hmm. we don't have to show up for the, for you all to purchase those. It's a, it's a labor intensive thing. It's a yeah. lot to organize and so on and so forth. But if it's about impact, and that's one of our core values of our company is we want to do the thing that's the greatest impact, right? What matters on Monday? It has to matter on Monday. That's yep. one of the core principles is the How to Charge Live event is that. And, and here's why I want to make this point is there are things in life that you know, whether it's building up to the wedding day or I recently went through some, uh, you know, this, this transformation with some friends from church and it was a super, super intense hours long thing we were mm-hmm. part of. Or... You know, if you, if I went to an event this last week um, with Dr. Josh Axe and his team at Leaders.com, like it was it was a day and a half where I was not useful for Elite Advisor Network, <laughs> and that like I was not returning emails, phone calls went un, unanswered. But if you really are serious about charging for your time and you really see it as valuable, then you will not take the six month path of listening to sixty eight episodes of the show. <laughs> yeah. Like we appreciate if you do, but. Take all that time and invest it in a day and a half at our offices, mm-hmm. and you will not, absolutely not regret it. And that is what will transform. Oh, yeah. That is what will transform you. Yeah. I mean, podcasts, books, there's there's so many things we try to create to where we're impacting people's mindset yeah. and approach, and we're introducing an idea to raise awareness. Uh, but if you're, you know, the people that come to the event, they leave like, this is, there's a rocket pack attached to my practice now. Yeah. Um, because you're going to have limiting beliefs in there and we're live in front of you and we're going to challenge what you have. Like that level of interaction creates lasting change yeah. quickly. I wonder too, and I just want to clarify this and then we can go back on to the topic, but um, but I, I want people to also envision like our our event as of now uh, is held in a room that fits about 35 people. Mm-hmm. And we love that. Mm-hmm. Like, is there a day, yes, when we could have 150 people in a training and it'd be just as effective? Probably. Mm-hmm. But for now, we're not talking about like, you won't get lost. You won't be like sitting by a table by yourself. You're not going to like, I went to a convention one time. Gosh, I feel like I was in New York. And it was just like so overwhelming. Thousands and thousands of people. And, mm-hmm. you know, I had to drive 30 minutes to get into the city. And then you could hide there the whole time, oh, yeah. right? This is not it. Like this is personal. You and I are there the entire time. We don't like go yeah. escape and run away. And we'll <laughs> okay. see you tomorrow, guys, you know. Well, I've it's gone not. to some great events where the content was great. Yeah. And it, nobody needed to know me. I was there just to consume and sure, I'm applying it myself. Um, yeah, this is different because I will be sitting at your table. You will give me an example of something and I will push back on you yeah. in a hard he way. He will personally make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, you will leave there You're with things welcome. where I'm like, Sten, what do you think? Well, Andy, what do you think? Like, And then we'll have other top advisors in there saying, what do you think? To me and my personality, if you gave me five ways to get better, yeah. I don't know if this is how it always was, but today with the yeah. way I'm wired now, yeah. It, 
this would be the thing where you'd say, hey, Stan, there's option one. You can do this. It wouldn't, it, it'd be less time consuming or this option might be a little cheaper. But hey, option, this option yeah. is the thing that changes you. And you'll look back and say, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. I always choose that one now. It's, it's probably the most uncomfortable. Yes. It's, it takes the most time, maybe uh-huh. some prep. There's some investment to it. But what I know now from repetition is it always has the best outcome. So this is the popular cold plunge. It's nice, like, dude. it's the intensity. It's like, yes, you could do this, this, and this. I've tried to stop talking about cold plunge because I became one of the people that just start talking about it too much. <laughs> my, my friend John says- <laughs> Just what, bring it up in every conversation. My, John says the hard, <laughs> my friend John says the hardest thing about doing- uh, what's the one everyone talks about, the workout that everyone talks about? CrossFit? Uh, yeah. yeah. He said the hardest part about doing CrossFit is not telling everyone you do CrossFit. That's right. He's like, that's the hardest part about CrossFit, which I think is the only time he's actually mentioned CrossFit. Was like, and then, but I'm pretty sure he does it because he's getting pretty jacked. That's great. So um, some congratulations, John, for not talking about CrossFit but while doing it. Um, but, but I want people, again, I, I love the people listening to the show and we get tons of great feedback and, and we've got great reviews on iTunes and we appreciate that. Um, shout out to the to the people who aren't bold enough to lead us a written review, but still give us one star. So nice. thanks for that. But they're not listening to the show now because they're. We hired some tech folks to backtrack their IP address. And see. <laughs> <laughs> Someone did ask me, "Can we find out who they are?" No, they're trolls. Um, so let's get back to this this idea of if if your most valuable asset is your time, mm-hmm. you know, it's a thing on the deathbed. I wish I would spend more time this and this and this. So wh- why what do you think perpetuates keeps you know keeps this idea going or this habit going where people even people who want to they just can't charge for it they just they they don't take that they they, they listen to the show they they work somewhere where it's like yeah i know we're allowed to charge you know x amount of dollars for a plan but i just i just haven't done it what is it that keeps people captive to uh, it's just products it's just aum i think at some level I'm not going to go conspiracy theory on you, but at some level, there are people that are decision makers in authority uh, that are not willing to reach down and change the system. Mm -hmm. The the, the law of numbers, meaning they're somewhat detached from the individual lives that are coming and going from this business so frequently, that if, if I'm looking at a spreadsheet and I say, hey, these people that don't have names that are constantly coming in and out are selling enough of my stuff for me to be profitable and hit my bonuses, why would I try to shake this thing up? Yeah. Um, so I think that's just practically there's some a disconnect there because the smaller the firms get that we work with, mm-hmm. the more in tune they are with like, I don't want Jim to fail. Like, how do I help Susan? Because if Susan does better, that sure. I, I feel that yeah. directly impacted. Yeah. Yeah. So those conversations, those people are much more willing to <laughs> challenge the status quo where they have a desire to. Yeah. I also think it, it's working just in, well enough, which anything that works just well enough will keep you trapped. And I, at times I'll laugh when I tell people, like, sometimes the worst thing if you've never, like, gone to a casino before and played blackjack or something is that you win the first time. Because now you think it's possible. I told my kids this. I was like, you guys know why this first 17, what, or not seven, it's probably, probably five levels of Angry Birds, like, y- you could just touch the screen and you win. Because <laughs> anyway. I'm so good at this. It's No, it's yeah. not. You're not good at it. They, they make you. you good at it, yep. right? And I've heard this. I've heard this, that they do this with... You know, gambling apps and stuff like that, where it's like, you know, where the first $200 is free. It's like, what do you know? You win. What do you know? You win. What do you know? win? And then you lose. But there's enough people are like, well, I just won three times in a row. I'm, you know, I mean, like, you think they're not thinking about those oh, yeah. things? Of course they are. And what our business does at times is come in, lean on your friends and family to get you enough business to survive. Yeah. But that's not viable. Like, one, the quality of your work probably not great. And so, you know, you're not creating the reputation you may want. Uh, and that pool is going to run dry at some point. Mm-hmm. And so there's these broken things in our, our, our world. But what I know as advisors, because we meet with them, is there's a lot of frustration. You know, there's people that break out of it that, that do decide to challenge the system and create yeah. their own and really push themselves. I would say most of the people we meet that have broken out of the average path have still just worked too much. Meaning, hey, I have a successful business now, but I sacrificed everything to get here. So I would even challenge those people to say, hey, I'm glad you did it, but I hope you wouldn't coach somebody else to do it the same way. Yeah. What... I enjoy conversations with advisors because you may be listening and you may, you know, if we had a, we should get a phone out and let people call in that they would want to call and challenge this. I've had that before. I'm selling enough AUM. I've got enough insurance. Why would I change anything? Our mission is not to get every advisor to disrupt and change everything they do. But across the table for me, based on all the content we've created and all the time we've spent with advisors, I would challenge any advisor to have a conversation with me and not leave there admitting my time is valuable and it is possible to charge for it, 
but I'm not going to. Yeah. I bet I could get there with anybody. And I'm thinking of some folks I know that are great advisors that they, if they could live with in reality with me and, and, and tell me in one breath that their time is valuable, yet I'm willing to give it away, that in 20 minutes we could arrive at a place that's like, Sten, that makes sense. Yeah. I know I could charge for it. Yeah. I'd help more people make more money, but I am choosing not to. Yep. And and it, it, what's so fascinating, and it belongs on a poster with a hot air balloon or an eagle or something, which is that you just have to choose. Is it is literally a choice. I mean, I talked to an advisor last week who is, and I said, you know, where are you at with your fees right now? Because our, our, our the advisors we work with, their fees adjust. Oh, I moved it up five, 500 bucks uh, a month, or I moved it up whatever. I'm, you know, my minimums of this, and I'm, these are my two prices or whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm just, he said, I'm, I'm, I've started very simple. It's a one, it's a thousand bucks, and then it's $500 a month after that, and it never ends. And that's just, if you want to work with me, Here's a thousand bucks and we'll start the plan. And after that, it's 500 bucks. And he's like, these are people that have been with me for a long, long time. I said, okay, so, you know, roughly, roughly seven grand. And he's like, yeah, like recurring. He's like, yeah. I said, now that has nothing to do with like the amount of value you're adding. He's like, yeah, I just, he goes, for me, I just needed to start. Hmm. And I was like, man, good. Yeah. Instead of trying to find what's the perfect predator, no, yeah. just start somewhere. That's and you a can, decent you start. Can I yeah. would challenge, hey, hopefully your service model is not out of whack. So you're not getting hosed on that. But what I appreciate about that is that's a more reasonable valuation of time than the advisors that come to us to say it's a thousand dollars for a year. Yeah, which yeah. is where I started at fifteen hundred bucks a year. Like, yeah. when we get that, we quickly push back on that. Right, right. But we're also not so rigid on like there's one way to do this. Like, if you come to yeah. me with a viable business model that says shows your time is valuable, yep. we have advisors like mine's five thousand, and I say okay, you better not be giving away twenty thousand of your time for the five. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Yeah. But if you have five thousand dollar financial plans and you are efficient and you've built a system around it to do that in a way that's a win-win and you're not breaking even and losing money, Yeah, I'm all for it. I I want to go back to what you said about our events and, and just our, our the people who become part of either our event or our community that are, that are smaller, that they're more, I guess, malleable and quick to adjust. What's in, I was at a, our, our last event. I was Can I caveat co- that real quick? Yeah. I will say that we have talked to leaders of large organizations, some of the biggest names, and there are some that are, that see it coming. Yeah, and they're on board. Absolutely. Most of them, though, talk it and don't deliver on it. Yeah, we've had more of those experiences. But the, the, my comments to the bigger system is it's harder to make change. But but there are people now, you know, and we've met them, talked to them, love being with them that that think this way and are in positions of leadership. Yeah, over thousands of advisors that see this coming too. Yes, and they will be in a better position than the ones who have just talked about That's it. Right. <laughs> um, and so I'm thinking of the one of one of the other benefits, and it's not one that you can like, you know, it's not a bullet point on a landing page that you can say, hey, this will happen, but it does happen all the time, is that if you come with a team member to how to charge live, that you will have difficult conversations and you'll be grateful for it. I mean, I was I remember sitting at a breakfast and I, you know, I'm there to help people move forward. So even though it's just breakfast, we're not just talking chit chat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so where are you guys at with fees right now? Like, where are you guys at? And you're just, because there was a the second day, sort of the second day. And uh, I said, do you need to make any hires? Do you know what you're starting, you know, fees going to be? And this person on my left was just quiet. She didn't say anything. And then I looked and I go, you're not saying anything. And I knew she worked for him. And I was like, you're not saying anything. Something you want to say? Nice. I said, safe place. You're at how to charge live. So let's talk about how to charge. Mm-hmm live you know what I mean? like, is there right now <laughs> and she said well my opinion's just different than his and what was cool is he was a very aware leader and he said hey i want to hear this like right. this is the time to talk about it you know she's like well i just disagree with you about and then they went and had a conversation she got fired i'm just kidding no, she yeah, got fired. Right. <laughs> on the spot <laughs> on the spot you're gone no but but they had a great conversation mm. about who we need to hire next and what we need to do with training and yeah. do we have the infrastructure that can support it and what should our fees be oh, yeah. what and was I our think, louisiana team that can't how many people did they bring Six, I think. I love that story. I mean, that yes. was a, that was a bold leader, bold leaders that were like, "We're doing this thing, game on." And yeah. they brought six people. <laughs> so, let me, I want to talk about those guys. But so, the end of this story is that it, they had a place to talk about it, mm-hmm. and I know that they went home and they made change mm-hmm. because it was this. You know, there's a reason that like you should still send your kids to summer, summer camps or whatever. Like, there's a good, there's a, something wonderful about getting out of your environment mm-hmm. and saying, "I'm going to go all in on this for two days or a week or whatever." Uh, versus sort of the slow, That's right. right? Now, with those guys, I think, yes, it was a leader's vision, but also if you're a leader and you're frustrated, mm-hmm. if you're watching, listening, and you're like, 
I, I have a team, and whether it's one advisor or five advisors or 20 mm-hmm. advisors, and you're like, I have the vision, but man, they just, they won't listen to dad. They won't listen to mom. Like, is there something about they just won't? And that was the other part of that is I think they had a group of you guys and, 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 and they admit to this. They're like, yeah, we just didn't really buy into his vision. Mm-hmm. And he's like, guys, I need you to share my vision with them, yep. but just in your own words. And it worked, yeah, right? It, taken off. It, it worked and they have absolutely taken off. Mm-hmm. Like, and where it was, he was 80% of their production mm-hmm. the prior year for planning fees. And that will not be the case. I oh, mean, yeah. it's got to be flipped at this point where yeah. they're, which they should be because it was literally one of him and five of them. And yet he was still 80% of the production. Yep. And I know that's radically changed. Yep. So I, I want to wrap with this, which is that we want you to not just say that time is your most valuable asset. Mm-hmm. We want to teach you, equip you, empower you uh, to make your time, your most valuable asset in that people will not ask for and expect lots of free meetings with you that they will see your time. I rejected a free meeting today myself because someone said, and we asked this question, are you ready to commit to this? And they said, no. And so I responded, but they had done it on a meeting request. It's kind of a rhetorical question. (laughs) And then I wrote it back and I said, we're not able to meet today because of this answer. You can email me. I'll respond when I can, but I'm not going to meet with you if, if if we say yes, 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 and you say no, I'm not willing to invest in that. I go, okay, then I like it. it's good boundaries. I va- I value my time. Well done. I appreciate that because our time has value, your time has value, and we just want you to live that out. And we have a great model that can teach you how to do that. So, Stan, I appreciate your time. Uh, I want to remind folks this one more time because mm-hmm. I'll uh, say one th- thing about this event before we close out yeah. is that learning to believe in your time has value and how to position it in a way to make you know generate revenue is great. We spend quite a bit of time at the event and prospecting too. Because what I know to be true is that we can have great systems and learn and yeah. be confident in our value, but if we don't have people coming into our office. Yeah. And so one of the problems I had to solve for myself as a young advisor in a cold market was I need reps. And so we, we have our whole prospecting strategy. And so you may be listening saying, hey, I, I want to charge for my advice and time, but like a, a, a bigger problem is I need more business tomorrow. We cover that. We spend hours on that and we'll teach you how to leave the event and you'll know exactly how to go prospect differently yeah. with a much higher close rate than cold calling, hoping people randomly refer people to you. Cause again, all challenge the prospecting system is broken. And not only do we help you get paid for your time, but we're going to teach you how to get in front of the right people. Yeah. Cause getting paid for your time is, or saying my time has value. It's just saying like, let's just make it real simple. Like you make pies. Great. Oh, what's their value? $2. We're like, no, no, no. They're actually worth 10. Like, great. There were 10. If no one's willing <laughs> to come in your store, there were zero. That's right. You don't have any customers. Yeah. Right. And so it's not just like, yeah, you're worth more. It's great. Now that you believe you're worth more, Mm -hmm. how do you get people to come see that you're worth more? And there's a very clear way based upon ideas and targeting strategies that that we teach. And that's Mm -hmm. lingo that you'll learn at the event. So again, till the end of June, 2023, go to howtochargelive.com and purchase. And we will be in touch um, within the next business day about how to get your free how to charge online program. And you, of course, could spend a day and a half with us in Nashville in September, which is awesome. So, uh, folks, as always, thank you so much for listening. We always appreciate your reviews. Stan, I appreciate your time, your candor, uh, and uh, thanks for teaching so many advisors how to charge for their time. Thanks, brother.